So hi everyone, today I would be giving you some information on product backlog versus a sprint backlog. So many of us as product owners or product analysts or business analysts, we would have, you know, come across the backlogs such as sprint backlogs or product backlogs. But there might be situations in which you might be wondering what needs to go into the product backlog, what needs to go into the sprint backlog and how do you manage these two backlogs. So here is a little bit of information. So the major difference between your product backlog and the sprint backlog is the product backlog is always ma managed by the product owner. So if you're a product analyst or a business analyst or a junior working under your product owner, then definitely you would find yourself in scenarios where you would collaborate and work along with the product owner in order to manage your product backlog. But most of the time it's product owner who finalizes and updates the product backlog. When you look at the sprint backlog, it is managed by the development team because the sprint backlog is given to them and based on the sprint updates and progress, the development team keeps updating the sprint backlog. When you look at what actually exists in the product backlog, the product backlog consists of the entire set of features that should be completed to re release the product. So your sprint, your product backlog can have features, modules, it can be anything related to your product. It can be detailed or it can be abstract as long as it consists of all the features and modules that need to be incorporated in your product. So this is what is managed in your product backlog. When you look at the sprint backlog, it is a set of sprint goals, tasks and plans also that should be completed to complete that sprint and release the features planned for the sprint release. So every sprint you would be having a set of goals then what needs to be completed in that sprint and how is it supposed to be implemented. So all these get catalogued in your sprint backlog and all this keeps get, getting updated as I said during your sprint. So this is what is contained in your sprint backlogs. The next difference is it, the product backlog does not depend on the sprint backlog. So since the product backlog is the one that first exists, it's always independent of your sprint backlog. As well as when you look at the sprint backlog, it's considered as a subset of the product backlog. And therefore, we can say that it is dependent on the product backlog because whatever features or whatever modules or whatever tasks need to be, you know, completed from your product backlog, all that is moved from the product backlog and pushed into your current sprint backlog. So therefore, if there's going to be no product backlog, then a sprint backlog makes no sense. So always make sure that product backlogs are independent of sprint backlogs. The next one is, the product owner or stakeholders will update the product backlog. So as I said, if you're a product owner or you might even find stakeholders involved in that pro product, they might be the ones updating your product backlog. When it comes to the um, sprint backlog, it's the development team who keeps updating the sprint backlog. The next difference is the product backlog may get updated frequently with new features based on customer requirements. So your product backlog sometimes if you're not following the, you know, um, uh, uh, if you're not following the waterfall methodology, you would find during, you know, the agile phase and the agile life cycle, there you would find yourself gathering requirements after every release or after every, you know, um, meeting with your client and after every retrospect meeting, you would find yourself maybe coming up to scenarios where you would be gathering requirements even during the middle of your product development. So always as you keep getting requirements, you keep updating it in your product backlog. And when you look at the sprint backlog, the sprint backlog is updated frequently during the sprint based on the development. So in a sprint, you would have your backlog and that gets updated. How does it get updated? It gets updated based on whatever sprint, you know, backlog item is completed, you update the status. Or in case you're not able to, you know, complete a particular item or it's not, you know, feasible during that particular sprint, then again you update it. So all these updates are done only during that particular sprint duration. And if your sprint is completed, then there won't be any updates done to that backlog. The next difference is a product backlog, it's created at the inception of the product development. So 
when you want to start you know developing a new product you obviously create a product backlog with all the features of your product in that needs to be implemented when you look at your sprint backlog this is created at the sprint planning phase so only when you keep planning what items can be pushed to your sprint only then you keep adding items to your sprint backlog so this is the difference between the creation time of your product and the sprint backlog the next one is features and modules are defined and managed in your product backlog whereas in your sprint backlog you would find user stories are defined and given to the team in the sprint so this is what the sprint and the product backlog contains and gets managed the next one is features are priority prioritized based on the business value and customer demand in your product backlog so in your product backlog you need to see what features you want to push out and what features need to be developed and what you know need to be pushed out first so how do you actually prioritize this is based on the business value that the product is going to give so how do you define the business values through what features actually give a lot of business value or returns back to the business and what features are in high demand by the customer so based on these different you know parameters and constraints you define the priority of the features when you look at your sprint backlog the user stories are prioritized based on the priority of a you know a user story and also the complexity so usually whatever you know user stories are able to be you know executed during that sprint it's prioritized first suppose during the you know the um duration or during your uh, a sprint there might be certain scenarios that you comes up where a user story might have some complexity with it or there might be some blockers or impediments at that time that particular user story is given a less priority because obviously it would take a lot of time and it makes no sense for the team to put in all the effort and time on one user story and then if it's not going to be released it's going to be a waste of time and effort so it's on these basis that the user stories get prioritized and also the effort in which every user story takes all these are taken into consideration to estimate and to prioritize user stories the next one is features from the product backlog will move into either the re release backlog or the sprint backlog so as i said initially all features depending on whichever sprint it needs to move into either it will move to your sprint backlog and if you don't know what is a feature backlog so a fe uh, sorry a release backlog a release backlog consists of the features which need to be you know completed in a particular release so you would have different releases for your product you would have an mvp you might have the next uh, release you might have an advanced release and then you might have the final launch of your product so for every release you would be segregating and categorizing your features that need to be released so sometimes the product backlog features move into your release backlog and from that release it gets moved into sprints because releases are not like sprints where it takes like 3 to 4 weeks usually a release can take months so within that particular release duration you would have different sprints that get executed so the hierarchy would be your product backlog features moving into sprints uh, your release backlogs and then it gets moved into your sprint backlogs when you look at the sprints the sprint backlog sprint items would be moved to the next sprint backlog or your release backlog or the product backlog if it is not completed in the current sprint so unless and until a particular item is not completed in that particular sprint it gets pushed back to the release backlog or it also gets pushed to the next sprint backlog or sometimes if you don't maintain a release backlog it gets pushed back to the product backlog the next difference is the lifetime of your product backlog is the period from the start to the launch of your product so till the launch of your product you would be maintaining that product backlog and when you look at the lifetime of your sprint backlog it's the period from the start to the launch of your sorry it's not the launch of your sprint i can say it it's the completion of your sprint so until then you need to manage your sprint backlog so to give you a very overview uh, a, a very uh, you know high level idea here you would see your product backlog you have your sprint backlog and you uh, your release backlog and you have your sprint backlogs so as i said 
features or items get pushed to your from your product backlog to your release backlog if you maintain a release backlog else it gets pushed to the sprint backlog and features or items from your sprint backlog get pushed to your sprint your release uh, sorry the fe features and items from your release backlog get pushed to sprint backlogs or sometimes if it's not a you know being able to get completed during that particular release it's again pushed back to your product backlog and for your sprints you would see sometimes if items are not being able to be completed during that particular sprint it either gets pushed to the next sprint backlog or it gets pushed back to the release backlog or if there is no release backlog it gets pushed back to your product backlog so this is the life cycle of the items in your backlogs and i hope this gave you a little bit of information on the difference between your product and your sprint backlogs and how to manage it and what each backlog contains and if you found this video useful please do give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel to get more videos and notifications on the next videos and also do share your feedbacks thank you so much